Okay, I am just gonna work on something here. I have the the driving demo city drive that I did in a video recently and now I want to make it that when the car drives up to like the gas station or something that the um, gas station attendant will come up to the car and act like he's pumping gas. So I just want to make a model here simply in Magical Voxel. So let me just start off delete, turn on the edges, grid, and the frame. So I like doing the model like that. And now I just got to make a little character. And in Magical Voxel, I hold down the, um, what is this left and right? I hold down the, le the right mouse button and I could rotate when I hold down the right mouse button. And I could zoom in and out with the mouse wheel. And if I press the mouse wheel, I could pan. Those three controls are useful to know. And I could make my own palette, or I could pick um, one of these two predefined palettes here. And those I can make too. But I, I like use, I'm just going to use palette one, and I'm going to say attach. So what I want to make here is like a little voxel character, and the character is going to have to be in the T pose. So let's see. A character is going to be uh, have symmetry on both sides, like the left and the right. So to make things easier, let's see if this is the symmetry axis, the X axis. Let me just make this a little bit bigger. Yep, it's the x-axis that I want, okay? And I'll start off with um, some feet. So I'll make the shoes gray. So there, I'll make the feet there like that, and I'll just give them a little bit more height. Boop! And then I'm going to go ahead and put some pants on them. Let's give them the pants in this color, you know, what the heck, like that. And then I'll just use the fill to bring up the pant legs. And now I want to connect the pants across the edge like this. And when, when I do it, I kind of want to get a little line across the top. So I'm going to use the line tool. I'm going to say line, and then if I go across the top, you see it's not, it kind of drops to the back. But there is a way I can make the line just draw right across these two things, if I can remember what it is. Look down here, there's a description for whatever my mouse goes over. And then this right here, it says project line on surface or a straight line. So right now it's on project, which when it was on that, and I tried to draw the line from one side to the other, it kind of, see, drops to the floor, control Z. But if I go to straight line, then... There you go, I get the line going right across for the pants there. And this this is what I was looking for. So I could draw a line straight across and make some pants at the top of the pants. And now let me just use face again and give him some waist there and a belt. A belt, a belt, a belt, a belt. He's a brown belt in karate. So, ooh, ooh, nice brown belt and a nice silver buckle. So... I'll just paint the silver buckle color in here. Ooh, that's too big. Well, maybe I'll put a shirt there. All right, so this guy is like the guy working uh, pump the gas. Let's give him like a uniform color shirt. I don't know, yellow, something bright. You don't want him to get run over by a car when the cars are pulling in. So there we got yellow shirt and it's in face mode still. So let me just drag it up to the size of his um, body. Remember, it's the right mouse wheel to look around. It's really kind of skinny here. Um. That's his body. Got to give him some arms. So let me just go to voxel mode and patch on. Remember, I'm in mirror here for the X, and that's why whatever I do on one side, it happens on the other side. And then face mode, so I can just pull out the arms. All right, and oh, maybe a little bit further. Let's see how that looks for his arms. I guess that's okay. And then uh, let's see his shirt over here. Let me just give it a little something like the shirt collar. And then let me make the person's uh, neck. That's that's bigger. Maybe I could make it smaller? No. How about if I say size 2? Or I'll just leave it like that, size 3, right? That's the beginning of the neck. And now the head. Uh, let's go to 3D mode and then make it a really big size. Give them a nice big head. Oh my gosh, that head's too big. Right, guy? Oh, look at that big head. So maybe 10. How about 10? That looks better. And now let me just put it on the neck. Okay, big head is a cute head. There we go. Then we will paint in the eyes, or should I? Oh, you know, while I have the, the skin color selected, I could, this is another trick here. If you have lost a color and you want to pick the color that's on the screen, I could just use um, the Alt key and click, and you can see my color change to yellow, or my Alt key and click, and I could repick some of the colors I already used. So I picked the, the color I have for the skin, and let me add on hands. So they will be, oh, they won't be that big. Put a three there again. And I will just add on the hand like that. It could be a little blocky hand. And maybe now I will paint on the belt buckle. So let's make it a nice shiny silver belt buckle. 
and I'll use B. B is just one little voxel drawing point. So, oops, I'm actually making this belt buckle in 3D. I don't think I meant to do that. Control Z. I want to paint it on as a color. So there we go, painting on the belt buckle. Okay, you got the belt buckle, you got the shoes, you got the hands. And now for a little bit of facial features here, we should put an eye. So I'll use uh, Y to the eyes. I'll go back to V. And this could also do circles. Okay, now I guess you don't really notice circles when you don't have enough pixels. So I'll just leave it as a square. And I'll give him two eyes. And let's make his eyes color pink. And let's use the B. It's one box of size. Boop. There you go. And do we have to even put a mouth? No, we don't. Um, should we color in some hair? Mm, no. I don't think so. I guess the way his feet are pointing is the way you can tell what's the front and what's the back. Now, the other thing that we have to do when this model comes out, it's going to be, we have to make it that um, it's able to bend at the joints. So the mesh that is created from this magical voxel model, I want to put some um, bendable joints in here. But I now realize like, okay, I had a lot of space here up at the top and at the side still. So I want to make my model get a little bit bigger. So now what I want to do is I just want to make the scale twice as big. Boom. There, that way everything still has like the same count all around and you got a little bigger. All right, cool. Now what I'm gonna do is etch out some lines. So I'm gonna use the erase and the line tool. So right around where the elbows are, I just wanna just cut out an etch in it in Magical Voxel to make sure that there are some vertices at the elbow to bend by. And by that same reason, I'm gonna etch out some around his shoulders. So the shoulders bend, because I know when I animate them, I want the shoulders to bend. Oh, I guess here is a line that bends, but I'll just be consistent. And just in case, let's do the the hands, in case his hands bend, in an animation. Doo, 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 doo. There, that's that. Now let's do the waist. So let's have his waist bend here. Okay, and we'll just keep going around. There we go. And his legs spin, so I'm just going to cut out something here. Oh, I messed up a little. Control Z. Pick from here to here. Good. And here to here. Okay. And then here to here. There, so his legs could bend. And the knees. Definitely need the knees to bend. So let's just pick his knees to bend right here. Uh-oh. Here we go. There we go. And let me get this part right here. And we're gonna have to have his feet be able to bend. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Now remember, I'm just adding in these cuts into my Magical Voxel model so that the mesh that is generated, it has like extra vertices so that, so that the model could bend at these locations. Let me add one for the neck. And that just keeps everything real from being really weird when I go into Mixamo. And then his head's not, not gonna bend really. I'll just turn and twist. All right, so this is like my mechanic. This is the, um, no, this is the attendant. So let's call him, let's save this. Let's see, the, this is the save. I press save and it's gonna ask me for a name and I'll call it the uh, attendant at the gas station, press save. So there we go, we got the attendant. Save them as a magical voxel model and now I'll just export it as OBJ. And I'm going to export it to my desktop because I'm going to go to um, Mixamo to get some animations for them. So let's just make a folder first because when you export as OBJ, it's going to make three files. So I make a new folder here and then call it a attendant, bam. And then inside there, I will save the attendant, save. And I guess I erased the name, Atten attendant, save. So now here's the folder on my desktop and I could close Magical Voxel for now. Go to, and now I'm going to go to um, now I'm going to go to Magical Voxel. So that's online, Magical Voxel. No, I'm going to go to Mixamo, Mixamo.com. Enter. And now I'm going to upload the model. So I'm already signed in. To sign in, you just have to use your, an email address. Okay. So take an available one. I have mine. Okay. So here we go. And when it loads up, it's probably going to show the last model that I put in there. Fine. Um, what I want to do is I'm going to upload a character. And now it says I could do FBX, OBJ, or a zip. So I'm going to do a zip 
because like I said, inside here, there's three files that Magic of Voxel exported. So I'm just gonna select them all, right click, and I'm just gonna zip them up together. I'm using 7-zip. And I'll zip them all up together into one file, one zip file. And then I'll select that one zip file, drag and drop it to the Mixamo upload window. And here we're gonna see the model uploaded with the colors and everything. And sometimes people don't get the colors, but I think if you just do what I do and you, you zip the three files and you bring it in, you'll get the colors. Now, just make sure everything looks okay, and it does. This, this is the front of him. I remember I put his eyes and his belt on the front. Now I'm going to say next, and I'm just going to tell Mixamo where all the different parts of the body are. And it kind of gives me a, an example right here of what it wants, the wrists. And that's cool. I have a little close-up there, the elbows. And I'm picking those joints that I kind of etched into the, magic, mix, the uh, magical voxel model and the groin, which I, yeah, it just shows it is like here. I guess that's like the pelvis. <laughs> now, in the skeleton level of detail, this is a 65 bones, but um, that's for one that has fingers and everything. I don't even have fingers, so my rig could be a simple 25 bones. Now I say next, and I let Mixamo do the magic of adding a rig to this character. And adding a rig means it's going to add bones inside the mesh that are going to be associated to, you know, bend the mesh when I bend when the bone bends. So I let it do its job. And the model is now being shown with a sample animation, and you can see how it just came to life. And since I put those etched points to bend, you see everything bends nicely. I'll say next. Um, okay, it's just warning me that I have a character. Do I want to override the one that was there, that little the white um, character that was there? So now here's my character I uploaded. So the first thing I'm going to do is I want to um, download the model here with this T-Pose. So I'm just going to pick to download this before I put any animations on. I'm going to use it in Unity, so I make sure I use FBX for Unity. And yes, I'll leave it in the T-Pose, and I'll say download. OK. And it's going to ask me, where do I want to put it? So you know, I'm going to put it here in the attendant folder. So that's on my desktop. And I'll just put it there in my attendant folder so I can have all the information for this attendant in one place until I get to Unity. Now, I can pick some animations. So if my attendant is waiting around for the car to come into the gas station, I guess I want an idle animation. So I type in idle so that the animation results could be um, filtered down. And now I could see some of the sample animations here. <laughs> yeah, let's have the attendant waiting at the gas station. Like, is anybody coming? Anybody? <laughs> Just looking for somebody to come. All right, so say I want this animation for my uh, idle animation for my attendant at the gas station. Now I could say download it. And once again, I'll pick FBX for Unity. So when it says with skin, that means with the um, mesh data again. Or do I want it? without skin, where it's just the animation data. So since I downloaded the T-Pose model already, that has the skin, I'm going to download the animations without skin. And it's going to ask me where to put it again, I think. So yeah, it should still be set by default to where I was for the FBX or the T-Pose. And it's cool. It has the name of my model and the name of the animation I picked. So I say save. So that's my attendant. Now I'm going to have to have one more for him. Um, I'm going to say it's going to be a, a running one when he runs up to the car to, you know, put the gas in the car. So I type in run, and now there's a filter placed on the animations that just show a bunch of run animations. So let's see, he's going to run to the car real quick to kind of work on the car. Which one do I like the way it looks? Like he's busy coming up to the car. This one moves, so let me just click the in place because in the game I will do the translating. So I'll click the in place to just have the animation like this without the animation moving. And I'll say download this one. This is going to be my run animation. Leave the same settings again without skin and for Unity. And put that in the folder. Save. OK, and then there's one more animation I guess I want. When he gets to the car, I want it to look like he's doing some kind of work. So I don't know if there is something called work. Let me see. Oh, well, I, I typed in work, and there's all these different things. Uh, let's see if he does this one. Yeah, it could look like he's working on the car, even though it looks like his head's going to go right through the car because <laughs> his head's too big. Um, what else could we do? So I'm a little curious. I just typed in the word stand, and I found this animation here, which maybe this will work. He'll walk up to the car, kind of bends down, does something to the car, and then stands up. Kind of looks like he worked on the car. Now, where was that? Uh... I kind of lost where I picked it from here. But anyway, let's try this one. You know, I could always do different animations later. So I'm going to down download this one. So these will be the three action the three action animations of my character for when the car pulls into the gas station and he's going to work on the car. So let's save that. I got idle, running, and stand. Okay. 
So that takes care of the animations for the model. So now it's time to go into Unity. So I could say goodbye to Mixamo for now and go into Unity. And today I am happy I downloaded Unity 2020. Woohoo! So this is the um, city drive that I'm going to continue with to have the car come into a gas station. And here's the um, existing game as it is. And I'm just going to press play to sanity check myself and also to try it out and have a little fun. So, yep, it still works. I could drive. And like I said, there's no colliders in the game right now. So driving through buildings and stuff is definitely an option. <laughs> and this is the inside here of the buildings. Let's get back to the road. And there's the road. Oh, the buildings again. Oh, the road again. Anyway, so the driving, driving around is still working of the car. So now what I want to do is I actually want to work on the animations for a character. So let's see, where can I, where should I place the place where the car is going to pull up and get gas? I guess I'll just make it over here. And I could make some more magical voxel models, but uh, what I'll do for now, I'll take the objects that I do have and I'll actually put colliders on them. Because, uh, you know, right now this... Uh, Voxel City, it's a model, but there's no colliders. So what I'll do is I'll add colliders. If I pick the roads, these are all high highlighted in blue. This is what my car is driving around on. And there's all these different road segments. So I wonder if I just pick this top parent level. No, I don't think I could do that. Let's see, because for each road... Oh, look at all this stuff. There's so many pieces. Arr, how am I going to do this? Hmm. I know that this Voxel City thing is modular. So instead of adding the colliders here, if I do click on any of these things, they did come in. They're highlighted blue. They are um, kind of like prefabs already. Maybe I could just go into the city voxel pack, the roads, and I could actually just update the prefabs here. And if I put colliders on the prefabs, then the road should have all the colliders on it, and I don't have to go to each of the individual roads. That makes more sense. So knowing that, I'll take advantage. So let me remove the mesh collider, and I'll add in... A box collider instead and then the box collider I could just adjust the height to the road part and I could do that edit collider and just drag down what appears to be the top until it there meets up with the bottom and it, there okay and oh I got to also probably adjust the width but I think the width is adjusted to fit so that's one um, road and you could save that prefab and now for the next prefab road piece, this one here, open the prefab, go to the part with the mesh, add component, physics, box collider, do the same steps over again. Let me turn on the little editor thing and, oh, uh, that's a little bit below the road. That looks good. Right, the thing I noticed is the numbers work out if I set the um, size to 1 and the height, oh, okay, the center to Y to 0.5 and the size of Y to 1. Those work out. Okay, so I finally went through and got to the last road piece and added Collider. Now, uh, let me just make sure I saved all those changes for the prefabs. And let me just have a little test here. I'm just going to add a little ball and make sure when I drop the ball that it doesn't go through the road, just to make sure the colliders are working on the road. Um, here we go. Just add a rigid body for some physics. And... Uh, the camera is going to be focused on the car, so let me just put the ball there. Okay, press play. Camera comes to the car, and uh, it's working. And the ball, and it lands on the road. Thank goodness. Okay, so that test worked. That means I could take the um, car, delete this sphere. Now I could take my car, because my car, I had restricted movement on the Y axis, so it wouldn't go through the road. Now my car, I could take off the Y, press play, and my car should just stay on the roads. So, what the heck? Why'd my car go through the road? Uh, does my car have a collider? Oh, yeah, my car has a rigid body, but it doesn't have a collider. So, okay, now I'll add a collider to my car. So, this is the top level of the car. It doesn't have the mesh. So, go down to the model part of my car, here with the mesh renderer. And here, I'll add a collider to the mesh of my car. To the level where the mesh is. And for this, I'm going to add a mesh collider, not a box collider. So the mesh colliders, if you want them to, you know, do rigid body stuff, I think I have to do this. You know, otherwise they just work as triggers. So I'm going to do this, turn on the convex, and it kind of looks like my car got wrapped with gift wrap. Yay! All right. So this is cool. That's going to be the collider on my car. Now, my car is above the ground. Fine. Right? Now, wait, 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 wait. Okay, that's still zero. Good. 
Let me save everything again. And now let me press play. And my car shouldn't go through the ground and it has its own collider. But um bum. There we go. Now remember those things there, they don't have anything on them as a collider. And also remember that the sidewalks and buildings don't have colliders, so my car will drop down. But um we're not gonna worry about that part now. We just want to get the little gas station guy working. And so time to bring in my little gas station attendant. I'm going to have to bring him into the game. He's still not in the game. Here he is, the folder. So, and it is a Magical Voxel thing, so I'll drag it into this folder with Magical Voxel stuff. All right, now I can hear. Now I have the attendant and the car, so let's organize and put the car in its own folder. Chevy Blue. Let's put those, and I spelled it wrong. Chevy Blue, how are you, Scooby-Doo? And take these three things and put them in the folder. And... That way we're a little bit more organized. So now the attendant, we have different things for the attendant. Yes, we do. We have the three animations. We have the attendant over here as an FBX, and that's the one I want. This is the OBJ. I want the FBX. So I'm going to take the models, the FBX, and drag them in. And what the, he is um, of a legitimate size. Uh, I'm just going to bring him closer to the car so we could, you know, not make him look like a little ant. We're going to adjust the sizes here. And you remember from when we did the car and we adjust sizes, we don't want to adjust the top level. If there's a triangle like this, we want to. I'm just going to adjust the level with the. Um, I'm going to adjust the level with the actual mesh over here, and you can see that this attendant has the mesh part, but then it also has the rig from Mixamo. Mixamo rig. You see that? Anyway, here's the attendant. Ooh, wait a minute. That is a question. If I adjust this mesh, and this is the rig, what happens to the animation? Do I have to adjust? this at the top level because there's a child thing that's associated to it. Ooh, let's do a test and find out. So I'm going to have to make the animation part play on him. So let's just do that here. I have to add an animation controller. And this is going to be for the attendant. So I'll just name it attendant. And then on the animation controller, I got to go full screen here, get more space. Um, let me open it. This is the animation controller. And you could click on the mouse wheel to move and scroll to zoom in. Let's pick the default state is the idle. So that's blue, um, orange. That's orange. That's not blue. That's orange. <laughs> and from when the, the game starts, the animation that first plays is idle. That's simple. Now let's place that on. Let me drag that down here. Let's place that on the attendant now that we made that. So here's my attendant. And let me drag the animation controller on him. There you go. And see, here's the animated thing there. So when I press play, he should animate. He should be in his animation position. And here we go with the play. And you can see that he is playing the animation. He's playing it once, not looping over. Let me do the looping. So the idle animation should loop and apply. And the running animation should loop and apply. And the other animation where he's going to like, you know, stand up after you summon the card. That's not going to loop. So I'll just leave that one alone. All right. So there he is. Now we have him and he's playing the animation. What happens with the animation if I take the model and I scale up the model. Let's find out. So I'm going to take the attendant with the mesh on it, and I'm just going to, it's not scaling. Why? Yeah, well, I guess that answers my question. Control Z. I'm going to have to do it here at this level and scale him. There, yeah, that, that question was answered. So does that look about the right size? I think so. Now let me just move him down. Remember that attendant, he doesn't have any colliders on him yet. He is just thing. So I'll have to just place him like on the road properly. And that looks, does that look like the right size? Or should he be bigger? Uh, I guess he could be a little bigger. Yeah, like that. And he, he looks like he could take a ride in that car. And let me just place him like he's almost on the road. Oh, that's his feet are going through the road. You see that? Let me place him like there. He doesn't have any colliders on him yet. Remember, save and play. Let me just see him with his little idle animation. And there he is, being an old man, waiting and waiting. All right. So, let's imagine here that the car is standing there, and he is going to be standing over here, and what I'm going to have him do is move toward the car back wheel, because that's, I guess, where the gas pump's going to be. He's going to move toward the car's back wheel, and I'm going to put the gas pump on this side. So he's going to move from here and come to there. For the movement, I'm going to use a nav mesh. So what I'm going to have to do is mark all the roads that are here in the game and mark them as static. So I select the top level, I'm going to click static, and hopefully, yes, it allows me to say change for the children. So everything below it, all the roads are now static objects. Now, if I use a navigation window here, bake. Now, if you don't have the navigation window there, what you have to do is go to window, 
AI navigation, and then you'll have the navigation window. So I click the bake button, and I just click the bake button again over here, and it should bake in it should bake a nav mesh. And what the nav mesh does is it kind of it kind of gives a layout for the um for characters to move around on where the computer calculates the motion. So now if I give my attendant uh. I have to give my attendant something for nav meshable stuff here. So under navigation, I make my attendant a nav mesh agent, somebody who could travel on a nav mesh that we just baked. And oh, I'm clicking a little too fast around. Click on the attendant. Okay, now this little green cylinder, that's the nav mesh agent height and size of my attendant. And we can see it's too big. So here we could adjust the height. Let's see if one is better. It's better, but still too high. So let me scroll down. Let me get closer so I can see what the heck I'm doing here. Okay. And just less height there. And definitely tighten up that band. Okay, so that's basically his size that the um, navigation AI is going to use to determine if he could fit in stuff or not. Okay, so this is a nav mesh agent. So he could so now my attendant is going to be something that's going to be able to move on the nav mesh. And this in blue is the calculated nav mesh. My wheels are in there. Okay. So together now, on the attendant, I could put a script to tell him to move somewhere on the screen. Uh, so first let's say that he's going to move to the car. I'm going to have to write a script for that. Let's go up here and create a C-Sharp script for the attendant. Okay, so I'll just call the script attendant. Studio, let's start to write the script. I always rip this out. And these are gray, and this is white. They're gray because they're not being used yet, so I'll take those off. All right, so here's my attendant script. Um, I'm going to need a variable for the nav mesh agent. So from the character, I need it in the script. So um, nav mesh agent, there you go, nav mesh agent. And I'll just call the variable NMA. It's going to equal null. It's public. So I'm going to set it in the inspector. And I think that's the first thing I need. So now let me go back here. The attendant script, let's put it on the attendant. Here's my attendant, blah, 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 blah. Now let me just put the script on there. And now here it wants the nav mesh agent. I could drag and drop it there. It knows what that is. Now here, the nav mesh agent is a very simple thing to use. So when the game starts, just to see that things are going to work, private start, private void start, start is, it's, a, it's an event from the mono behavior, OK? So when the game starts, the attendant script will run the start function. And in here, I will set a destination for my character. Set destination, destination, and I need a target. All right, so let's just say uh, target for now. And we're going to make a variable up here that we're going to let the user tell us the transform, um, the game object that's going to be the target that's going to follow. OK, we'll let the user tell us in the inspector window. And that means this target, we need it to be a target dot transform dot position. Okay, because the position is a vector three. The target is a game object. And the position is a vector three. And this wants a vector three. Setting this command, it's gonna the nav mesh agent's gonna take over and it's gonna start walking to the target until it gets there. That's it. Just that's how you use the uh, AI for navigation. All right, let me go back now and let me make this bigger so people could actually read it better. Oh, and you noticed when I use nav mesh agent. It's part of the Unity Engine AI. So Visual Studio 2019 or Unity, I think it's Visual Studio 2019 did it. It automatically added a using statement for the Un U Unity Engine AI, because that's what Navmesh Agent uses, Unity Engine AI. All right, so I updated the script. Now let's go back here in the attendant. I just have to tell it what the target is. So I'm going to make the target be Chevy Blue, the car itself. Bam. So now I'm going to press play. And uh, compiling and you can see he moves toward the car and then he stops he's at the car location all right you can see him right there now of course that doesn't make any sense we don't want him to move into the car that's not the goal so what we need is a target for him to move to near the car not the car so you know what we did when we did the camera target for the camera to follow the car the camera tries to always get to this purple dot we're going to do the same thing for this guy and make another little empty game object for him to kind of focus his movement to on this side. So go to Chevy Blue and let me add 
let's add another. Let's look at the children here. We have the move to target, which is that. That's for the camera. And now I'm going to have another create empty. And I guess I'll call this one the um, the gas cap. <laughs> okay, that's this is where the gas cap is going to be. So uh, in order for us to visually see this gas cap thing in the scene, let me just add a gizmo color thing to it. So purple I'm using for the camera. Let's use red for the gas cap. Okay, I don't know. You know, just use red. And as a matter of fact, I could use these even better so I could see the names of these things. So move to target for the camera. I'll just use this. And now you can see that they have the name of which thing they are instead of just colors. So here's the gas cap. Um, we're going to definitely want it to be not inside the car, which right now it is still in the car. So I'm, no, not the car. Control Z. Select the gas cap. Move the gas cap over. Okay, good. And then we want it to be kind of near the back wheel. And I know the car's in the air, but his nav mesh agent, the feet are on the ground. So when the wheels are on the ground, this will be near the ground. Let's put the car back on the ground again. All right. So if the nav mesh agent tries to get to this location, then that, that should be him working on the car. Let's see how close we should get it to. Now on the attendant, instead of the target being the whole car, we'll pick the sub object of the gas cap of the specific place that he's going to try to get to. So now save and play. Hmm. Takes longer for things to start running in 2020. That's okay. So there he is. Why is it all chunky? Ah! He went through the car and he's at the right point, but he is pointing the wrong way. He, he never turned around. He's like not facing the right way. And he went through the car. I guess what we're going to have to do is make the actual car an obstacle for the navigation mesh. So I'm going to select the, here's the car with the mesh collider. Um, let's see if I could add it something, a nav mesh obstacle. All right, so this here is going to be something he's going to have to walk around. He cannot um, kind of crash into it, so he won't walk through the car. He's going to have to go around the car. File, save, and now let's see if he goes around the car instead of through it. Come on. Jeez. Okay, here he comes. And yes, now he's going to go. Come on, Grandpa. No, come on. Get around the car. There you go. Yes, there you go. And the gas cap's right there. Goody, goody, goody. Whew. All right. So we're getting there. He moves toward the car. Um... Whew. That's good. That's good. So, you made it to the end of the video. I'm so proud of you. This is my website. The main thing I want to show you is that for any of these videos that you've seen on YouTube, I have the tutorial section, which has the blue links for the projects, and the orange links are the files. Also, you could go over here and play some of the games we made in the game camp.